Hello everybody, Scott Golden here with the Golden Opportunities Coaching YouTube channel and the Pro Wrestling Logic YouTube channel. This is the Pro Wrestling Logic Report for Impact um, 2.10.222. Uh, Lady Frost defeating Alicia on the BTI program. Again, BTI kind of pointless. After this, we'd see the debut of the quintessential, quintessential diva, Jaleese Shaw, coming down to the ring. She posed not even acknowledging Frost. Show opens with Josh Alexander coming down to the ring. He said that for the last few weeks, he's been out there to talk about Impact World Title, but no one, uh, not one thing he cared about more was the Impact Wrestling itself. He said that at no surrender, he'll go to war against Honor No More. He also addressed uh, Moriarty and Moose, who will be wrestling for Impact World Title, and then brings up, uh, uh, I'm sorry, Morrissey and Moose, and brings up uh, what Scott or Paul Scott did more. Keeps telling him he needs to keep his emotions in check. Morrissey's out there running wild. Alexander said that at no surrender he will defeat the defend Impact, but whoever walks out with the title that night, he's coming to get them, and that he's about to invoke his rematch clause. He's interrupted by Big uh, Con, the former Connor of the. Ascension Alexander knew why he's there and he wasn't waiting a week or another minute. Alexander called out a referee so they could deal uh, with a match. Josh Alexander defeats Big Con. Con has a size advantage, takes some offense early, but Alexander quickly locks on an ankle lock and tapped out Con in less than two minutes after the bell. Alexander keeps the ankle lock on until security comes down. Alexander attacks them even and then. Um, Fans chant, you deserve it, Scott D. Moore. After everything calmed down, D. Moore talked to Alexander about their relationship and some sentimental stuff about Alexander's wedding and signing him. Alexander tells D. Moore that he only cares about becoming the world champion and becoming the flag bearer for Impact Wrestling and that he he's tired of D. Moore's process. He wants the shot or else he's gone from Impact. Uh, D. Moore then... Uh, relented um, by suspending Alexander and telling him that he's off no surrender. Alexander is fantastic in this. Dean Moore was a bit over dramatic at the end of this. Fans turn on Dean Moore. Um, anyway, so uh, backstage, Steve McLean want, uh, wanted in on Team Impact. Uh, um, and that to be about him, and then attacked him last week, and Dean Moore told him that he would uh, be be up to Team Impact to decide who was taking Alexander's spot. ROH Women's Champion Deanna Peraza defeats Santana Garrett to retain the title. Last week, Peraza makes an open challenge to anyone who wanted a shot at either her ch either of her champions at her championship rather. Garrett answered she originally competed for Impact under the name of Brittany in 2014. Uh, started with many counters and reversals and goes into a quick pinning attempt to continue with Garrett getting some offense, but Perrazzo dropped her on the apron and hits a baseball slide, sending Garrett to the corner. Back in the ring, Perrazzo controls the match and then she works over to Garrett's arm after a couple of minutes. Garrett then made a short comeback with a cartwheel back elbow attempt and the last chancery, but Perrazzo makes the move uh, and makes the ropes for that matter. Garrett then goes for a handstand Frankensteiner, but Perrazzo pushes her off and gets her into a Koji clutch. Garrett rolls out and... Uh, uh, she goes for the top rope. Perrazzo catches her with a Fujiwara armbar and catches her coming down. Garrett tries to escape, but the champion turns that into a European clutch for the win. Finish is weird, but it is what it is. Uh, then Chelsea Green defeats knockout champion Nikki James by DQ in a non-title match. Lots of women on this show. Last week, James offered Green a match. Uh, this is a short match. Starts with some back and forth sequences, reversals, and counter wrestling escalated into both women chasing their signature moves, but then Green ended up hitting Steels with her own move, and uh, Steels and Evans attacked Green, giving her a DQ win over that. And then uh, 
leading to potentially a three-way match somewhere in the future. Gia Miller interviews Blueprint uh, Geiger or Buhipka Geiger after about joining Impact. He says that uh, he finally achieved his dream of being a pro wrestler and is happy to represent India on Impact. Raj Singh approaches him. Congratulate him once again. Geyser ignores Singh. Bullet Club was violent by design in the Good Brothers segment. Uh, Bullet Club, Jay White, Chris Bay, Tamatonga, and Tangaloa comes down to the ring. Loa introduced Tonga and himself and said that they were, in a few days, they're going to win the Impact Tag Team titles. Uh, do we, does anyone even care about the Tag Team titles at this point? Anyway, um, White also talks about facing Eric Young. At which point, Violent by Design comes down. Eric Young talks trash about being part of the group he created and then not living uh, from someone else's creation. He responds with that if Violent by Design runs around on impact, then the Bullet Club runs through them and the whole thing gets out of control. Then they would grieve with Switchblade. Eric Young challenges the Bullet Club to a six man match next week. White accepts, but then he also wanted the brawl right there and then. Uh, suddenly the Good Brothers joined in on this. Uh, Carl Anderson wants to take the opportunity to get thanked for creating the Bullet Club so that White and company had houses. Tonga Tonga takes the mic and thanks the Good Brothers about finally getting things coming together. Anderson and Doc Gallows starts running down their accolades, but Tonga so uh, responds that the only reason the Good Brothers have been everywhere is because they've been fired everywhere except the Bullet Club itself, but that changes in no surrender. Uh, we go backstage and we see Jonathan Gresham uh, taken out and need medical assistance. We saw Matt Cardona turning heel last week and attacking Jordana Grace with a chair to win the Digital Media Championship. Uh, Jim Miller asked Cardona if he had some words about the win last week. Cardona said that he uh, screwed it hard to kill and that the impact uh, didn't even check on him, so he knew that he had just focused on himself. Cardona said that if he, what if it wasn't for him, there wouldn't be wrestling, vlogging, playing video games on Twitch, or making YouTube shows. He told Grace to bring No Surrender because he's always ready. The OGK, Matt Taven, Mike Bennett with Honor No More, defeated Rich Swan and Rhino with Team Impact. Third match in the rivalry between Team Impact and uh, Honor No More. Maria Canellas Bennett joined on commentary. Taven and Swan start off with uh, uh, Taven getting the early advantage, but then the pace picked up and Swan takes over. Um, both parties are outside and getting into it with the referee. Taven and Bennett take control and cut Swan off after the distractions. They worked him over and uh, constant quick tags. Swan manages to make a comeback and then use a bit of miscommunication between OGK to tag in Rhino, who comes in wild and almost hits the gore. Maria then blinds him with the uh, Fuji dust powder, setting him up for Taven. For the win, after the match, OGK takes down uh, OGK takes down Swan and talk trash to ROH. Head carry Silken, who who is at ringside. Uh, they threaten to attack Silken uh, while McQueen ran down for the save. McQueen takes out Taven while Rhino finally gets the gore on Bennett. Ian Riccoboni and Silken talked backstage where uh, McLean walked up. They thanked him, but McLean said he did it because... He had beef with Honor No More. Eddie Edwards didn't want McLean on the team, but Riccoboni vouched for him. Um, and then uh, Team Impact welcomed him to the team. Uh, Gene Miller interviewed Julie Shaw about stealing Lady Frost's spotlight. Shaw said that she can't steal anything from Frost never owned, but Frost has a problem with that. They could settle it next week in the ring. Uh, next week, Julie Shaw, Lady Frost, Mickey James, and Chelsea Green versus Tasha Steeles and Savannah Evans. Chris Saban versus Kenny King of the Bullet Club versus Violet by Design. W. Morrissey defeats Brian Myers with the Learning Tree in an ODQ match. Uh, that is the way we close the program, which is just uh, meh. Anyway, they've been going at it for a couple weeks. Uh, BSK and Dice tried to attack Morrissey before the match, only to get taken down 
but once in the ring, numbers get the better of Myers, takes over, and Morrissey, uh, Dice, and BSK are set up on tables. But before they could take him down, Morrissey, he managed to boot Dice into one of the tables. On the other side, Morrissey choke slammed BSK through another table, and Morrissey slammed Myers on the apron. Without Dice and BSK, Morrissey and Myers went back and forth with weapons, but e even after many kendo sh stick shots from Myers, Morrissey kicked out, and uh, all at once, uh, Myers then attacked Morrissey with a trash can lid and followed up with <coughs> the <coughs> benefit of duct taping Morrissey to the ropes and proceeded to attack him with a kendo stick over and over again. Myers escalates this into uh, using a trash can lid until it's worn out, brings out the second one. Coast to coast drop kick. Myers finally releases Morrissey from the pin, but only gets a two count anyway. Myers then goes for the roster cut, but Morrissey comes back with a big lariat, a corner splash, a trifecta, and a big boot. Morrissey hits the BQE, but uh, goes f instead of going for the pins, he brings out thumbtacks for second and third BQE for the win. After the match, Moose attacks Morrissey with the title, but choked him out with a chair, wrapped around it and um, Morrissey's neck, and hammers it. With a second chair, Moose poses with the title to close the show. Honestly, Impact is... They've got a lot of talent, but their writing is really subpar. We'll be back with more right after this. <laughs> 